rotunda of Thessaloniki in northern Greece is a magnificent building with some magnificent mosaics. It is all the more magnificent because it has somehow survived the centuries and is set in the middle of an ordinary Mediterranean city full of modern apartment blocks and the bustle of daily life. It was built in 306 AD as a mausoleum for the Roman Emperor Galerius, but he ended up being buried in Serbia, and so around a century later, the abandoned structure was turned into a church, and this, sometime in the early 5th century, is when the mosaic decoration was added. So that means that these mosaics are some of the first examples from the Byzantine period, when gold and glass mosaic decoration was used to inspire wonder and create an earthly reflection of heavenly glory. The central dome is 30 metres high, so it's easier to look at the mosaics that remain on the ceilings of three rectangular recesses set into the thick walls. They have wonderful secular designs, including this pattern of circles with the swastika inside. And these beautiful ceilings showing birds and fruit representing the fruits of paradise. In fact, these designs are incredibly similar to ones you see on Roman floors. All you have to do is swap out the gold and glass for stone, and they would be the same. Don't forget that these mosaics are about a 100 years older than their famous counterparts in buildings like San Vitale in Ravenna, and yet they are as finely and as brilliantly executed despite the clear signs of damage caused by earthquakes. The mosaics in the central dome have only recently been revealed after decades smothered in scaffolding during renovation work. They consist of three distinct zones. The lowest band, which you see here, is pretty well preserved and shows a number of figures thought to be martyrs or possibly donors standing in front of a series of Hellenistic and Roman buildings set against a gold background. I love the details of the curtains tied up as if it was washing day and the peacocks up in the balustrades. Some of the buildings have been identified as the Jordanian tombs of Petra and the library of Ephesus in Asia Minor. The middle band, which is above this one, is almost completely lost, but you can see little fragments of green at the top of the screen. And apparently, if you have a pair of binoculars or good eyesight, you can see a circular row of male feet in sandals, thought to have belonged to saints or angels. Lastly, there is this fragment left over from the centre of the dome, which is assumed to have shown the figure or the face of Christ. A lot of the decoration has been lost, presumably to earthquakes, and perhaps a bit of deliberate defacement when the building was in Ottoman hands, and you can just see the bare brick, which is lovely in its own right. There is still an altar kept as a reminder of the, of the building's use as a church, as well as some faded frescoes. Outside, you can see the additions which were added when the rotunda was used as a mosque, an ablution area and a separate minaret. They were allowed to remain when northern Greece became independent in 1912, and it was then that the rotunda was reconsecrated as the Church of Agios Dimitrios, and it is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I hope you enjoyed this short tour of the mosaics at the rotunda, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then please subscribe below.